Hello and welcome to my channel Rapid Vectors. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create your very first level, add a tile map with the tile sets and then add physics collision layers. You will also have background, foreground and ground layers so that you can easily create different style effects using the tiles. So before we begin creating our first level, and then using the advanced tile map, we can create a global script and set the renderer color in that script and then revert this back to the default editor color. The second change I'd like to make is to increase the size of our parallax background. At the moment, this is slightly too small, so we'll use a scale factor to increase the size of that. So let's create a global script which will act as a singleton for the game. So what we'll do, we will create a new folder called script and then a new script and we'll call this game manager. Let's open that and then let's go to project settings and in auto load, let's add that script. Go to scripts, add it, add and then enable the script here. Then in the ready method, let's call the rendering dot server or rendering server and then set clear color and then let's set that color. So back in the project settings under general and then rendering and environment. If we open that, we need to assign these values here. So if you hover over, it's these values here. So for our red, green and blue and alpha channel is 044012 and so on. So let's add that to our clear color in the method. So we'll record those values, let's reset the colour back and then close that. And then in set default clear colour, create a colour variable and assign in those values here. Let's run that again. So you can see we've still got the colour. And then back in the editor, it, that's now default. So let's begin creating our first level. Let's go to scene, new inherited scene. Choose base level, let's rename that as level one. And let's save that scene. But at the moment we've got our player, we have a tile map, which we configured in a previous tutorial. And now let's assign our parallax background. If we look at our parallax background, I feel that this is slightly too small. So I'm going to make some adjustments to this. I'd like to make the scale of this bigger because at the moment there is a set width and height on the actual image so we'll scale the value instead so go to parallax background choose the first sprite let's hide everything else for now and then in the sprite let's scale that so let's make that one and a half times larger and let's choose the second image and just switch that on and as you can see this also needs to be scaled so let's increase the scale of that and then we need to adjust the transform again because this is being mirrored so we can do that by increasing the position here and let's zoom in okay so that's 360 and then pop to the layer itself and in the mirror we need to mirror that at 360. And let's just test that. So that's not quite right at the moment and this is because I need to double this value here and then let's turn off the first one and that's right. Okay, let's do the same for our middle ground parallax layer. If we turn these off for now, or actually we can leave them on. So the first sprite, let's increase that scale. And then for the second sprite, we'll do the same. And then let's move the image over.
Okay, so that's 408. Go back to the parallax layer and put 408 multiplied by 2. Zoom out. And then we can test that. So that's right. So they're now being mirrored correctly. So now that I've scaled the parallax background layer, let's just close that. Let's go back to our level one. So we can now see the change here, but what I'll do is move the parallax background so that it sits on top of here. And what I'd like to do first is just to switch on grid snapping and then smart snap. And you'll find that things will snap better to the grid. So when you use props or any other items, it's very easy then to, to build up the level for that. So let's move this to the top node and then move that. So if we go to transform and just pop that onto the axis. And now let's go back to the tile map and start to configure this before we build our level. So because the tile map is in the base level and I'm using an inherited team, just pop back to base level, go to tile map and you can then configure it. In a previous tutorial, I've shown how to create a tile map tile set and then add the images here. So feel free to view that. However, it is easy just to add a tile map node quickly add the tile set and then drag and drop this into here and then when it says create atlas say yes because I am going to go through showing how to create more physics layers and then drawing them onto the actual tile map and building up that level. So let's begin by adding more physics layers so if you click that here under the physics layers you can see that this is already active and what we'll do, we'll pick some more on here so that we have some more physics and collisions. So if we just click paint and then choose the physics layer. We can choose all of the neighbors and activate these. So for these options here, I will say that these are all the ground layers. I will use this for more of an overlay which I'll show later. And I won't choose these because I want the player to run along the top of this line and this section to appear behind the feet. However, for these slopes, the player is going to run up the middle of the slope. So let's make some adjustments to that. So first of all, pick the tile and then in this window, let's just make a modification as such and then click it again. And you can see that's now being applied. So I'll just paint it again in the next window, but I'm just going to put that to the top corner and then move that slightly up, paint it and then paint this back in here and then just slightly modify this. I do want that in the middle so it looks like the like I said, the player going up the middle and then just modify it a little bit more until I get them to join up. Okay, that looks about right. Actually, just a little bit more. And let's do the next one. I'm going to do this one and the next one. So I will pause the video and come back. So as you can see, I've now finished doing collision shapes for each of the shapes. So when I add these sloping tiles, the player will be able to run up them. So let's include the platforms. And in the Wart Assets Pack, let's add the props on the wall so we can use some of these for the background and foreground elements in our level design. Once you've added these, let's add them into our tile set. And now we can use those. If the tile sets look grayed out when they've been added, click Setup and then activate those tiles. Now let's do the same for our walls. 
So now we've added our new tile sets, some props and some walls, and now we've also activated those tiles. Now let's click back to the tile map, and in our layers, we've currently got a layer called ground. Let's add two more. So we want a layer called background. And another layer called foreground. Let's move the background layer to be the first in the collection and give this a Z index of minus one. In the ground layer, we'll leave that at zero. That's the same index that the player is at. And the foreground, let's put that to one. So what the desired effect should be is that anything we put on the background will sit behind the player and anything that sits in the foreground will be in front of the player. So let's have a look at that. So these changes that we've made to the base levels tile map should now reflect in level one. If we click on the tile map here, we can see that we've got those layers now and we've also got the tile sets which have been pre-configured. So let's begin by creating our layers. Let's first go to ground because we want to create some platforms for the player to walk along. So let's do that. I'm just going to create something very simple for now to begin with. So we've got a platform here and then I'm going to create something just above the player here. I'm going to put some more details in the platform. So let's highlight these two items. Let's just quickly draw those along the top. So let's take the top pieces as well. So we get the actual effect. If we zoom right in, we've got the ground and then a bit of the ledge at the back as well. And then I'm going to put some items in the background. So let's go background. Let's put some of these cubes in. As you can see, the foreground has been greyed out. So let's pop an item here as such. Let's go back to ground. We can see that is now a, a little bit darker because that's in the background. And then what we can do is let's put something in the foreground. So let's go to foreground and let's choose this item. And let's just put some bits there. So let's just grab our player here and then let's drag that down and save that. Let's run the game. So as we can see, the player, the background is sitting behind the player. Where the feet are, you can see the ledge is just behind the feet. And that's because we've done the collision box just on the edge of the tile. And then when we go behind the foreground, we've got a foreground item that is sitting just in front of the player. So this is how we get a bit of depth and perspective to our level. So now that I've shown you how to paint items in the level for the background, ground and foreground, I am now going to complete a full level design and then show you and go through some of the items that I've created. So I'm going to pause now. So as you can see, I've now completed my level. I've got different items on the foreground, on the ground, and also items for the background. So let's run the game so you can see this in detail. I've got different platforms for the player to jump on. I've also created some water. But as you can see, you can see the um, screen in the back. And as we run right to the end, you can also see the background here as well. So in the next tutorial though, I will show you how to clip the camera. Let's stop that.
Now that brings us to the end of creating our first level. As you can see, you can style all of the different components from the tile map. So feel free to visit me on my next tutorial. Thank you for watching.